guys, it's Miss Ash here today, and we are getting ready to start week two of summer. And this week, we are going to be exploring the southeast region of Michigan, which is a pretty big area. So for this week, we are going to talk about Ingham County, Monroe County, Jackson, Macomb, Hillsdale, Oakland, Livingston, and Wayne. So those are eight counties that we are going to talk about this week. So there's a lot of information for us to cover. Now, if you think about the southeast region, when we hold up our hand, <laughs> we hold up our mitten, the southeast region is going to be this pocket right here, okay? We're also going to talk about Lake Erie. Now, within this region, both the city of Detroit and the city of Lansing are in counties within this region. However, because those are both such big cities and they're so important to our state, we are actually only going to talk about Detroit this week and we will talk about Lansing in a later week because part of Lansing actually falls in another county. It falls in two counties. Actually, it falls in three counties. Oh my goodness. So we're going to talk about it during a later week. So as we get ready to explore this county, we're going to talk about all the same things we talked about last week in Jackson County. We're going to talk about restaurants, the economy, the history. We're going to talk about community connections. We're going to talk about really cool places that you guys can go. But one of the other things I'd like you guys to try and figure out this week is you have two teachers that are from the southeast area of Michigan. Can you guys figure out which two they are? Hello, my Torrent people. Mr. Sam here. This is week two of our summer program. And yes, we are going to be discussing Southeast Michigan. And I'll be sharing our historical facts for this section. Now, of course, this being a bigger section, there's a whole lot of stuff. So we had to kind of condense things down. So I tried to find some of the coolest, most interesting historical facts for this certain area. So I'm going to go ahead and shift our view and we'll take a look at what we have. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. As you can see, I have my face at the center. Now, I went ahead and put this one at the very top because it's, especially in today's times, it's extremely important. It says there were a few different uh, routes or stops for the Underground Railroad uh, that ran through Southeast Michigan. And now this was very important but because of course, it wasn't an actual railroad. This was um, a path that our escaped slaves would take to gain their freedom by getting to Canada. Now there was a different, all sorts of different routes that they would take, but this link that I went ahead and sent us to shows a nice little map and then it gives us a whole description of what it was and what it was like in Michigan uh, during that time. But as you can see, we have it coming right on through. And we'll go a little bit more and zoom in. As you can see, we are stop in Jackson, Adrian, Ann Arbor on Detroit. And then when they would go over here, this is where Canada would be on this side. And so very important stuff. And of course, this is a really cool section. As I scroll through, they, they have little different activities. Um, they go right along with this. So feel free to check that out. Nice little cool activity. All right, and then for our next area, we're gonna be focusing on Detroit a little bit because as stated right here, uh, the oldest city in Southeast Michigan is Detroit. Okay, now that is not the oldest city in the state of Michigan. Okay, that's Sault Ste. Marie with St. Ignatius being second. But this is for just Southeast, um, Michigan and Detroit was uh, first established back in 1701. Now, of course, we were not the United States then. We were actually settled by the French. Then we switched over to the British. Then we jumped back French, then British, and then finally us. Now, of course, what brought people here? Well, beaver did. The beaver fur was the most highly sought out fur out there. And of course, Michigan had abundance of them, as well as other um, uh, different um, wildlife that they would use their um, hides for as well. 
Now, with that being said, Detroit's had a lot of shifting around um, that's gone on. Um, the next historical fact that I brought up was Detroit's population. Now, no major American city has seen this type of increase or decrease, okay? But with this, as you can see, back in 19, oh, I'm trying to get it to a regular screen, sorry. Back in 1950, more than 1,849,568 people lived in just the city of Detroit. Now that was back in 1950 when it was booming with our automotive industry and everything. And then of course, as of 2020, um, only 667,272 people now live here. Now that's a huge drop. And of course, back in 1910, we had 465,766 people. So that's a massive, massive, drop in our population. Of course, we had to have all these different housing, housing uh, projects and businesses. And of course, with that huge drop, well, that's where we're finding a lot of different abandoned structures, which is why, why I'm gonna share with you this really, really cool website that allows you to explore some of those uh, different areas. Now, this focuses on some of the old abandoned structures. This right here is the old Silver Dome, Detroit Lions used to play there but it's full of history and uh, just different pictures of um, really what uh, the city of Detroit's gone through. Like just the old zoo on Gross Isles, not in Detroit. Okay. Now, because of this, we had this huge spike, okay, in population back in Detroit because mainly because of our automotive industry, which we're gonna slingshot down here towards the bottom. I'll highlight it a little bit. Um, Michigan is known for the first automobile assembly line ever produced in the world, okay? Now, automobile assembly line, which then you can take that whole assembly line system and pass it down to other products. Well, that started right here in Michigan, okay? Now, that's, of course, Mr. Henry Ford's idea for the Ford Motor Company, and that is actually how it just boomed. The Model T was by far the most uh, selling car at that particular time, and of course, that was back in 1913 on up. Now, of course, don't get that confused. This was just the first automotive assembly line, not the first automobile, okay? That would go to um, um, Ransom Olds who um, was able to uh, produce the first automobile, okay? And then um, these last two um, facts I wanna share, okay, I'm trying to make this, Quick and simple. Um, there's a lot of wars back in the 17 and 1800s um, that took place in the United States. Now, within the United States, Michigan only had one war that actually touched our Michigan soil. And that was the War of 1812, and it was the Battle of Frenchtown, or what is also referred to as the Battle of River Raisin. Okay, that can be actually located right over in what we now call Monroe. Now, sadly, things did not go very well. Um, Michigan was still a territory. We weren't a state yet, but we um, had just lost ourselves to the British again. Our first ever governor, General Hull, gave up um, uh, Detroit. So in, in, uh, in regards to um, trying to um, get Michigan back, they... They ended up having that battle, which it didn't go so well. There was over 300 American deaths, along with 500 that were taken captive. So things didn't go over so well. But they really used that as a nice little rallying cry to help uh, push, um, uh, you know, for victory in that uh, in later battles. Now, continuing off of that, I'll end on I guess one of our cooler facts, which would be that Mission claimed. Toledo, the city of Toledo, and actually Maumee as its own until the Toledo War of 1835-1836. Now, of course, when you think uh, war, uh, technically it wasn't actually a war. There was one person who was injured. It was mainly a scuffle over a property line. Now, Ohio had already been an established state, and Michigan was still a territory, so they felt threatened. Now, it was all over 
this simple strip, as you can see, where it says the Toledo Strip. Now, they said the mistaken plot line of the southern tip of Lake Michigan was right here, which is now our original line, the true line of the southern tip of Lake Michigan. So basically, there was a dispute over this chunk of land. Michigan wanted it, but Ohio wanted it, of course, because it's being there on Lake Erie, right there, um, where they were able to import, get different imports and exports uh, through that waterway. But of course, they weren't able to gain uh, control of Toledo. Actually, uh, our president, Andrew Jackson, at the time, was able to slide on in and helped us out with a compromise. It actually led to us becoming a state in 1837. And we also got a trade by giving Ohio, Toledo, and Maumee this little strip. We were able to gain the rest of the Upper Peninsula. So as this little picture here, this is what we gave up. And then we have the Upper Peninsula. Now we didn't gain the entire Upper Peninsula. We already had about 20% of it. So where my finger is, we're Sault St. Maria's. We already had that. But then, of course, we got all the rest of that. And at that time, we thought we did not get a very good deal. I'm like, oh, man. But, of course, as we started discovering different, um, different products and minerals like copper, iron ore, and then, of course, our lumber industry, we had billions of dollars in prop and uh, profits just from the products that were being produced. And, of course, that was a much, much greater deal than our friends down south from Ohio got. So we really came out on top with, with that deal for us, for us Michiganders. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed my historical facts for, for, our, for this week. And I look forward to sharing more of these facts with you throughout the summer. Have a good one. Connie here to talk to you about the southeast region of Michigan. The southeast region of Michigan includes nine counties and the first of our Great Lakes, Lake Erie. If you click right here on the word Erie, you will see a short video that talks to you about that lake. Did you know that Lake Erie is the shallowest of all the Great Lakes and the warmest? Watch the video and see what else you can learn about Lake Erie. These nine counties, if you add all of it together, you will find 298 county parks, 12 state parks, 52 rivers. However, some of those rivers are the same. But there are 947 different lakes. Wildlife that you will see in these counties are the coyote, the white-tailed deer, the Canadian goose, and the painted turtle. Remember last week we talked about the white-tailed deer being the state mammal? Well, this week we're going to talk about the painted turtle. The painted turtle is Michigan's state reptile. Click on that word and you will see a short video about the painted turtle. What's interesting about the turtle to me is that the eggs are laid underground, the turtle hatches, but then he stays underground all winter long. He reawakens in the spring, digs his way out of the ground, and enters the pond to live the rest of his life. The other state symbol we're going to talk about this month is the mastodon. It is the state fossil. It was found right here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and in some other places around our state. Click this link here to learn all about the mastodon. Native plants you find in this region are the white baneberry, the columbine, wild ginger, and butterfly weed. We grow at my house butterfly weeds because it's a great plant just to do that, feed wild butterflies. If you click here, it'll tell you more about these um, native plants and others you can find in our area southeast region, you will find 8,472 farms. On these farms, they are growing soybean or corn, hay or wheat. Or they may be raising cows or cattle, hogs, chickens, both for eggs and for meat. 
some unique farms that you'll find in this region are raising quail, colonies of honeybees, and we're going to talk about honeybees on Thursday, or pheasants. Now, if you would like to find out more about each of these individually, individual counties, click on this, click on that link. This is what you'll see, Southeast and Lake Erie regions. Here you will find information about the native plants, about each individual county. So there's Hillsdale and their information, Lenaway, Monroe, Warshanaw, Wayne, Ingham, Livingston, Oakland, Macomb. And then after each individual county, you're going to see the pictures. Here's the picture of our state reptile, the coyote, the white-tailed deer, the state mammal, Canadian goose. There's pictures of the crops that you will find in this region and the livestock that you will see in this region. And finally, pictures of the native plants. This is the butterfly weed I told you about. And this is the other one that Miss Connie grows. It's columbine. It's just a very delicate, beautiful flower that I enjoy, but it's also native to Michigan. I look forward to seeing you new on Thursday. And Thursday when we meet, we're going to talk a little bit about honeybees and why they're important to us and to the rest of our country. Hey, Torn Tigers. Welcome to our second week of our In and Around Michigan Summer Adventure. Um, this week again, I'm going to be talking about Michigan economy. Uh, we're talking about, uh, when we talk about economy, remember we're talking about the businesses and the industries that keep that area uh, going, that keep people employed, uh, that keep money flowing in uh, to the cities and the counties. So. This week we're talking about Southeast Michigan, um, really close to home here in Jackson, uh, kind of a, our connecting counties in the Southeast area. Um, if you look at your in and around Michigan pamphlet and go to the second page there, um, you're gonna see uh, our economy page and we're talking about the top industries in Michigan by their county. So, We've got nine counties this week. You'll see Oakland, Wayne, Monroe, Ingham, Washtenaw, Lenaway. If you go down to five here, you'll also see Macomb, Livingston, and Hillsdale counties. Um, again, we've got some great um, visuals here on the pamphlet uh, that kind of display county by county what the biggest industries are. So you can see based on color and size, uh, what the various industries are in each of those counties. And you could kind of look county by county and look at all of Southeast Michigan uh, and discover some of the similarities and some of the differences uh, between the counties. As you get closer to the middle of the state, you see a little bit of a different trend, um, maybe slightly away from manufacturing and more into human services, uh, retail food industries. Um, and then as you get a little bit closer to Lake Erie, uh, we start to see more of the manufacturing, uh, some more of the trade, uh, but we also have those same food services, educational services, uh, and retail trade. So uh, let's look a little bit closer at some of our uh, economy in Southeast Michigan. Again, guys, here's our um, map of Michigan. We've got uh, the Southeast Quadrant down here in yellow. Can kind of see all the the nine counties that we'll be talking about. We've actually included Lansing, uh, Ingham County, uh, in this as well. So um, that'll be another one. And we're not going to talk about Jackson this week because we talked about Jackson last week. So let's move on here. Here's your top five industries in Southeast Michigan. A close first, we've got manufacturing. In second place, we've got healthcare and social services. Third place, we've got educational services. Fourth place is retail trades. And in fifth place is food service. So when we think of manufacturing, 
right away uh, our minds go to, in Michigan anyway, our minds go to what we see here, assembly line of vehicles. And another guy here uh, putting together a pickup truck. So remember, manufacturing is anything you can do uh, to put something together, to build something, to create assembly line. Um, but we also see a couple of, oh, let's go back one, sorry. I also see a couple of students down here at the bottom and they're putting together um, electronic parts uh, for computers. Uh, we see another guy over here who is uh, remanufacturing uh, some glass products. So recycling and remanufacturing is also so. Um, I think you'd be a little bit surprised when we think about Michigan. We think most of the manufacturing comes from automobiles. And that's true. It does. A lot of it does. But really only about 7%. The rest of our manufacturing, as you'll see in this chart, comes from other uh, other motor vehicle parts. And then at the very bottom here, we have actual motor vehicles. So you can see there's some other industries in Michigan that keep our state running. Uh, we have a lot of, um, as we talk about northern Michigan, we have a lot of uh, real estate and rentals and leasing, um, fishery, gaming, uh, things like that. So you'll see as we move around the state, there are a lot of things other than vehicles that keep us moving. But Southeast Michigan, uh, up against Lake Erie, we do do a lot of automobile manufacturing, a lot of parts manufacturing, and a lot of shipping of that through the lake areas um, into Ohio and um, Canada. Go to the next slide here. Healthcare services. So, what is healthcare services? Well, a lot of it is exactly what we'd expect it to be with uh, nursing care, maybe um, nursing homes for elderly individuals, direct care workers. Uh, we see some social, social work agencies here. Uh, we've got some, some workers who are putting together. Uh, bags right now for families uh, in need. We've got emergency room care, hospitals, uh, Michigan Department of Human Services, um, just any any service that is out there to help people. If you're helping someone, you're in the social services, you're in the health care, uh, you're making someone better. That could be our physical health, it could be our mental health, it could be uh, counseling, family organization, uh, care and comfort, uh, many, many different things go into the social work. So if you enjoy helping others, healthcare and social services could be a great field for you. Next on our list is educational services. So when we think of educational services, there's many different things. You could be a professor uh, or a teacher or a worker at a school. We have Michigan Rehabilitation Services, Michigan International Education Services, Educational Services for Critical Thinking, Creativity, Synergy, Healthy Living, um, any service that aids uh, education uh, would be considered an educational service. So uh, Michigan is a big education state, so that's why we see so much industry in the field of education. Uh, we also have great educational services in the state. So. Michigan really is a great place to be uh, if you're looking to receive education or if you're looking to work in the field of education. There really are a lot of opportunities all over the state, but we see um, a large region being the southern and southeastern quadrant of the state. So uh, if you'd like to work in a school, you like working with kids, you like working with adults, uh, you like working with families, um, everybody is touched a little bit by education uh, and there's a lot of opportunity to work in that field. Retail trade, this is a fun one. This is the exciting one. This is a buying and selling of goods. So we've got a lot of manufacturing going on in our state and that even includes, uh, which I didn't talk about, obviously the manufacturing of food. We have places um, 
which we'll talk about when we get on the west side of the state. Uh, particularly, we have some real famous places that do manufacturing of food. But we've got uh, things in the retail trade include your shopping malls. Can't see it very well. We got the Twelve Oak Malls over here. Uh, we've got Pennies. We got AT and T. We've got Goodwill Industries. We've got grocery store clerk down here, and a and a guy from Shipped. Shipped is a big thing right now. If you like um, going out and doing grocery shopping and picking up things and delivering them, um, this is a huge market right now and um, some new job opportunity that has really, really shot up over the last uh, half a year. Um, so there's just so many, there's so many opportunities in retail trades um, that are directly connected. Retail trades are obviously directly connected to uh, manufacturing. So products are made, products need to be sold. Okay. So even things like our automobiles down here. So we've got, a, we're big in the state for manufacturing in the Southeast part of the state for manufacturing vehicles. We've got a lot of vehicle manufacturing plants. Those vehicles got to go somewhere. Some of them may be shipped, uh, out of state, out of country, but the majority uh, of them they go right to uh, sales lots and are out for sale. So uh, retail trade is huge everywhere you go, but there is um, quite a high percentage, almost uh, depending where you go in Southeast Michigan, you could be anywhere from 10 to 15% of the economy uh, in each county in retail sales. Last on our list is food services. Food services are huge. Again, uh, we've got lots of people in this state. I think we're somewhere around the 10 million mark. Um, and almost four of those million live in the southeast quadrant of Michigan. So we've got 40% of our state living in the southwest quadrant. That's why the economy is so large there. That's why there's so much employment uh, in that area. And guess what all those people they need to eat so we have to have food services so if you'd like to work in the food services there's plenty of opportunity um, in and around Michigan but specifically in Southeast Michigan uh, whether that's um, we see a couple pictures here of some nice barbecue uh, we see food catering service you see a lady here she is setting up the table uh, for a party so we've got Restaurants that you can go to. You see some uh, waitresses here uh, delivering and picking up food. We see a cook down, a couple of cooks down here uh, preparing food. We've got the catering services setting up for parties and different events. We've got Gordon's delivery, things like that. And then down here in the very bottom, we've got Gleaners um, Community Food Bank of Southeast Michigan, a uh, very big proponent in Southeast Michigan, uh, feeding a lot of people in need in that area so lots and lots and lots of jobs in the food service if you love working with food uh, and people this is really the best of both worlds when you talk about food and human services um, there's a lot of great opportunities to work in the food industry um, if you're really interested in food and you want to find out what's hot in southeast michigan go over to our transition pamphlet and check out mr terrence's uh, food section. He's got all the best places to go eat in Southeast Michigan. Um, and he's even recommended for you what to get on the menu. So how much easier could it get than that? So maybe order something, go on a little trip, go head over to Southeast Michigan and get yourself a little bit of food. So I'd definitely be amiss if I didn't talk about one other industry that's in the Southwest, Southeast quadrant of the state. And that's our professional sports industry. So whether it's bringing in fans um, selling merchandise. This is really a huge industry uh, in our state, and it happens to all be kind of around the Detroit area in the Southeast Michigan. We've got several professional teams, um, maybe more, I, I don't know this to be fact, so don't hold me to it, but maybe more professional teams in one city, county, region of any other state in the country. I don't know, maybe somebody can look else can look that up and get back with me on it. Uh, but I'd be surprised if there was another that has more. But I could be wrong here. We've got the Detroit Tigers, obviously, MLB, professional baseball. 
We got the Detroit Red Wings here in the middle. Uh, professional hockey. We've got the Detroit Lions, professional football, and the Detroit Pistons, um, professional basketball. So Lions and Tigers and, well, not the Bears, that's Chicago, but we do have the Wings and the Pistons. So um, you can see as we talk about our automobile industry too, some of the influence that it's had on our professional sports. You can see the wheel here on the Detroit Red Wing, kind of representing some of our automotive history. Um, and then obviously uh, Detroit Pistons, Piston being a uh, integral part of the combustion engine, um, which uh, was created by Henry Ford. Well, maybe not created by Henry Ford, but definitely uh, commercialized and, um, and produced by Henry Ford. So. Um, I'm not going to give you a history lesson. Um, that's Mr. Sam's area. So head on over to our pamphlet portion uh, of Southeast Michigan history. I'm sure he's going to touch base uh, on some of the great history in Southeast Michigan, including our car industry. So get over and check that out, Torah Tigers. I'm going to get out of here. Remember, Torrent Tigers, enjoy. Uh, discovering our southeast quadrant of Michigan. A um, lot of great counties, a lot of large counties uh, in southeast Michigan. Uh, remember the major fields, manufacturing, human services and healthcare, education services, retail trade, and food services. So uh, really some great um, job opportunities, great fields to be in, uh, many, many, many occupations within those industries. Um, so if you, if you enjoy any of those fields, there's lots of opportunity in and around Michigan and especially in Southeast Michigan. So I hope you enjoy this week, uh, discovering Southeast Michigan and look forward to talking to you on Thursday, uh, and, and enjoying this great state that we live in. So take care, Torrent Tigers, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. It's Terrence from 3.6. I hope everybody's had a great weekend. We're going to talk about some restaurants today from the Southeast Michigan and Detroit region. Uh, first up, we're going to talk about Buddy's Pizza, which is one of the most amazing pizza spots in the state of Michigan. They are famous for their Detroit style pizza. It is a deep dish style pizza. Uh, you can actually, without driving to Detroit, you can actually go to Ann Arbor, Michigan and get a buddy's pizza there. You can get carry out. They make awesome, deep dish Detroit style pizza. Highly recommend it. Next up on the list is Slow's Barbecue. If you're in the Detroit area, they have some amazing barbecue and they have a variety of plates. I highly recommend their brisket, super good. Uh, their side dishes as well, some macaroni and cheese. They are very good cornbread, lots of amazing dishes, chicken, things like that, brisket, 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 and they make some really good uh, barbecue sandwiches. Uh, next up on the list in the Detroit region as well, if you find yourself on the east side of Detroit, please stop at Vergotti's Poultry and Fish Market. It is a you buy we fry style where you can go in there and order shrimp, different types of fish, uh, collard greens, macaroni and cheese, lots of awesome side dishes. Highly, highly recommend it. And while we're still in the Detroit area, also on the east side of Detroit is uh, Cashew Cafe. Um, they are well known for their mussels, very good mussels there. And while you are there, you can actually take up a game of feather bowling. Not very known in many places, but one of the few restaurants that actually you can go there, eat, and get yourself on a list and play some feather bowling, which is very much like playing bocce ball, except at the end of the channel there they'll have a little feather you want to try to get that ball as close to the feather as possible without hitting it a very fun game that you can play while eating uh, there at cashew cafe highly recommend the mussels next up on our list is takira's lupitas 
Takira Lupitas, which is also in Detroit, and they are well known for their Mexican style food. It is in Southwest Detroit, another highly recommended spot in the area if you find yourself down there. Get yourself some different tacos from there. And leaving the Detroit area and kind of sticking with the Southeast Michigan theme, uh, if you find yourself in the Ann Arbor area, a little local spot called the Earl has been there for 30 plus years. Uh, it's a little hole in the wall that not many people know about, but the people that do know why it is so good. I go there for my birthday. They give, if it's two people, 50% off deals off of your total bill. And one of my favorite dishes there here is the scallops. And what it is mostly excellent about the dish is the sauce. They specialize in a French cuisine there. And that sauce is so good. And some broccoli and a little bit of rice. But like one of my favorite places to eat in Ann Arbor is the Earl. In the Southeast Michigan region over in Livonia. If you feel the need for some breakfast, please stop by the Early Bird and treat yourself to some breakfast. They also have good lunch specials, but their lunch or their breakfast uh, game is on point and I highly recommend one of their omelets there. Here we have some eggs, a little bit of hash brown, some ham, full glass of orange juice, and some toast but one of my favorite places to go when I head out to the Livonia area. And if you find yourself for some reason in Hamburg, Michigan, please stop by the Dragon Court. This is one of my favorite places to eat. I grew up not too far from there in Pinckney, and uh, it is one of the few uh, American Chinese restaurants that still makes almond chicken the way they used to make it in the 70s and 80s with the breading and with the yellow gravy, not the gravy off the Cisco trucks like you'll see nowadays in most restaurants. They actually make all their stuff in-house, fresh, from scratch. One of the few places left that still makes almond chicken the way they used to make almond chicken. So even if you don't find yourself in Hamburg, Michigan for some reason, drive to Hamburg, Michigan and go to the Dragon Court. You can get carry out, you can eat in, it is amazing. And that is my last stop and one of my last highly recommended places if you are eating and dining in Southeast Michigan. I hope everybody has a great week. Please get out, check out some of these places, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye. Hi, guys. Um, it's Miss Angie. So um, this week we're talking about the Southeast part of our state and so that's a big chunk and it covers several counties and they are Ingham, Monroe, Jackson, Macomb, Hillsdale, Oakland, Livingston, and Wayne. We have decided to um, not cover Ingham because our state capital is there and we will cover that at some point um, in our summer. Um, there's just so many things that we can talk about in our state capital, which is Lansing. And so um, we're gonna talk about um, six of these um, because we've already covered Jackson as well um, last week. So we're gonna cover Monroe, Macomb, Hillsdale, Oakland, Livingston, and Wayne um, through this week. Um, so my part is attractions. So this right here, um, in the pamphlet, we have, um, I just got three pictures. So this is the Spirit of Detroit right here. Um, and Meckley's um, Flavor Fruit Farm, which is my very favorite or, um, orchard, and then a monkey because of the Detroit Zoo. So if you click on this link, this will take you to the, fifth, the top 15 best things to do in Detroit. Um, there are so many things to do in Detroit. You can go to museums, you can go to stadiums, um, you can walk the, the streets of Detroit and there's murals. Um, so, so many things um, to do in the Detroit area. Also, um, if you click on the last page of our pamphlet, um, 
each county has its separate, as you can see, heading. Um, so Hillsdale County has Flavor Fruit Farms and, and its link. Um, and then it's also known as the Antique um, Capital Allen, Michigan is also known as the Antique Capital of Michigan. Um, and then Monroe or Macomb County has a couple things. Um, and actually the Detroit Zoo is there. So if you click on that, it'll take you to the Detroit um, Zoo's website. Um, when you click on these websites, just make sure um, when you or your parents click on the websites, just make sure that you look to make sure uh, that they're open um, because some of the things are not open yet. So in Monroe, I found a little zoo that I thought was pretty neat. It's called Indian Creek Zoo and it's just really quaint and it kind of looks like a binder park zoo. I've never been there, um, but you can go and take a sloth encounter and a giraffe ad adventure. Um, so um, maybe have your parents scroll through and see what they think. Um, and then in Livingston County, you can go right to livingstoncounty.com and it shows you all the things to do there. So the great outdoors, it gives you um, a COVID-19 update um, and you can, oh, right here, experience, things to do, outdoors, events. So it gives you all of those um, different links to go to. So um, this is on the fourth page um, and then the same links are right there on the second page. So, um, and Mr. Terrence will, sh will tell you all of the, the good restaurants in these areas as well. So um, I hope you enjoy and take pictures if you go to any of these places. Bye guys. really cool things about the southeast area of Michigan is not only that it's so big, it's that there's so many things to do there. And Miss Angie just got done telling us all about the places you could visit or how to find places to visit. But some special places that I think you guys might be interested in have to do with our sensory friendly areas. And I found some throughout the Southeast area and I didn't hit every county just because there were so many. So I hit some of the really big ones. So there's a play place for autism and special needs in, Mount, in Macomb County. And this is a special place. Not only do they do like therapies and stuff like that, but they actually have a physical play space um, for people with disabilities to go. So they have a safe place to play and that is designed for their sensory needs. Sky Zone is a jump space that you guys will hear a couple of times throughout this thing because they do sensor, special sensory friendly times um, throughout their week where they turn on the lights, turn on the music, and just make it a little more comfortable for people who don't like loud noises and lots of stimulation. So those are both in Macomb County. In Ingham County, we have the Wharton Center. And the Wharton Center is a place that does plays and musicals and theater. And they do sensory friendly performances and they are so much fun to go to. So if you ever wanna check out a show, they are a great place to go to. Abrams Planetarium is just like Ellis Sharp. They have a sensory friendly one. This one just happens to be on MSU's campus. Potter Park Zoo has the Falconers Club, which is a very special program that they do for people with disabilities, and it gives them a chance to explore the zoo in a different type of way than they would just going to visit. And the last place is Impression Sky, which is one of my favorite places in Ingham County, and that is a whole museum or hands-on science center where you can do experiments or just explore the world around you. They even have a bubble tube that you can stand in and you pull a bubble up over your head and it is so cool. In Livingston County, they also have a sky zone and they have the Ann Arbor Hands-On Museum and that place is so
so much fun if you've never been there. I highly recommend. They have sensory-friendly kits, my turn events, which are special events with sensory-friendly um, needs of mine, and they even have social stories about their location to help you prepare when you want to go. In Oakland County, they have Legoland and Sea Life Aquarium, and these are both sens have sensory-friendly times as well. Now, I've never been to Legoland, but I have been to Sea Life, and it is pretty cool. It shows you animals from all over the world that are too injured to live in their home habitats, and they even show you special animals that you can only find in our area. So each Sea Life Aquarium is somewhat different. They don't have the same animals because they show you animals that are native to our area. So you would see some of the special fish that Miss Connie has been talking about in our regions. In Wayne County, they have Wings for Autism or Wings for All, and this is a program that helps prepare you if you're getting ready to take a flight and you're kind of scared and you've never gotten to do it before. So you can take a special class that helps you learn how to be on airplanes and so it's not so scary when you go on it for the first time. They also have a day out with Thomas at Greenfield Village. So Thomas the train comes to Greenfield Village and you guys could hang out with him. Um, and they only do that a couple times a year. So you might want to check the link if that sounds fun. And then the next couple of places are museums that are in downtown Detroit and they are beautiful places to go and visit. So there's the Charles um, H. Wright Museum of African American History, and they do a sensory-friendly Saturday. Same with the Detroit Institute of Art and the Michigan Science Center. And those are all kind of in the same area. They're in the same plaza. You can walk to each of those locations from one another. And it's one of my favorite ways to spend a day when I'm down in Detroit is to go visit a couple of those. And they do sensory-friendly events so you can explore the museum in a way that's not so overwhelming, especially because they're big and they're so loud. So if you want to learn about African American history or go to the Art Institute or the Michigan Science Center, it is a super fun way to explore those events. The last place is the Henry Ford Museum, which is one of my favorite places to go from when I was a little girl. And they also do sensory friendly Saturdays. So you could check out all the stuff about Henry Ford there. The next thing that we are going to talk about is the community connections again. So because this is so big, I try to pick ones that service most of the southeast area or larger sections of the southeast area. So Judson Center is a community agency and they do pre-employment stuff, skill building, respite care, primary care. So you can actually go to the doctors, like a regular doctor at their office. But they also have doctors that will help with behavioral health or mental health um, and your emotions when you're not feeling good. They have an at-home therapy program, not just ABA, but therapy. And they do ABA and they have behavior tutors and family services. Um, Goodwill in the Wayne County does a special program for individuals to learn about job skills um, as a part of their person center plan. So you actually go to Goodwill and learn job skills there. So maybe making hangers or hanging up clothes and how to actually run the Goodwill organizations. Disability Network is another thing that provides community um, awareness, advocacy, independent living skills, employment, job readiness activities, peer support services, home health, and health services. Um, they do community-based services, counseling, living and learning, house experience. They help you find places to live. They have a loan closet and more. So they're another good agency down in the um, southeast area. And the last one is a really cool place that's in the Lansing area, and it's the Children's Therapy Corner, and they provide therapeutic services such as speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, musical therapy, and more, all in a setting that looks just like a home. So it feels like going home, so it's not as scary when you're learning new things. Now, because we are looking at such a large area, they don't have just one CMH. Like, we have one Lifeways in Jackson. They have lots of them. So I put all of them that apply to our counties in a link here so you guys could find whichever one you would need to know about. 
One of the other things we're going to talk about this week is therapeutic riding. Now, I know there's a couple of friends in our group that already are therapeutic riders, and you might see your riding place located on this list. But we broke them down by county. So there's some in Livingston, Ingham County, Macomb County, Oakland County, Washington County, and Wayne County. And therapeutic riding is special because you get to work on your physical health and your um, occupational therapy all while riding horses and learning to take care of animals. And that's very special. Plus, horses are super fun. Oh, guys, they've got typos. Good thing we're chatting today. So we have, under the music therapy option, some organizations that you could do music therapy in as well as what we do at school with Miss Tomoko. Miss Tomoko will be on a list for a different region in the future, just so you know. But there are some couple places here, and one of the things that you guys might be interested in is there's actually a music therapy camp called Eric Rick Starr's Music Therapy Camp, and it's done through the Michigan State University Community Music School. And this year, because they can't do things face-to-face, -face, they are still hosting it online. So that might be something that you guys want to check out to see if it might be something that would be fun to do at home. Now, this week, we are on week two of our summer program. And next week will be week three. And next week, we do have a Wednesday Live. So make sure you guys check in with us and tell us how we're doing and if you're learning new things about Michigan, too. Because even though some of us teachers have grown up in this area of Michigan, we still learn things this week too. Check out the newsletter at the end of the week to find out what we learned about this area of Michigan. I hope you guys had fun. And I would love it if you guys could tell me some of your favorite things about this area of Michigan. If you like to come visit here, you like going to maybe Mexican town and going to one of the restaurants. Or maybe you like going to Dearborn and getting some of the Arabic food there. Or you like going to Hamtramck and getting Polish food? Because I know those are some of my favorite things to do in the Detroit area. And I would love to know if we like the same things. See you guys on Thursday.